The scale out backup repository is an incredible way to have control over your backup data, whether it's on premises, in the cloud, in an appliance, direct attached storage, you have full control over that data. Now in this quick demo, I'm gonna show you how you can adjust backup data in the scale out backup repository. Let's take a quick look at a demo. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is a list of a number of different repositories inside of the backup infrastructure section of the Veeam interface. So Veeam Backup and Replication has had the scale out backup repository for a long time, and it is built upon a collection of individual repositories. So I have a few that are already set up, and I'll walk you through that in this quick demo. So if you look at the list of repositories, we have Azure Archive Storage, Azure Blob with Immutability Storage, Direct Attached Storage, whew, all, all kinds of different things, including immutable on-premises storages. And when you go and add individual repositories, you get this nice little wizard, whether you're adding Direct Attached Storage, Network Attached Storage, DDoP Appliances, or the incredible list of object storage in the market, which I should really emphasize includes on-premises systems as well. So we can look at the public AWS S3, including archived in Glacier type storages, Google Cloud, all kinds of options. Now let's take a look at a scale out backup repository that I have configured with a really clean lifecycle where backups start on-premises and then they go to Azure Blob and then to Azure Archive. Now this first stop, as it were, the NAS backup, that is an on-premises NAS system. And let's just say I wanna make a change. So I'm gonna adjust how this is set up. So this scale out backup repository has one performance tier. Now that performance tier is that NAS share. Now, if you look over on the background there, you'll say, it's actually not that big, especially by backup data standards. And this is one of the great benefits of the scale out backup repository. I can add an additional extent, which is another storage system that can help scale out this backup repository. So this other resource in here, you'll see I've got a number of different choices for ones to add to this scale out backup repository. I'm gonna add this NFS share because it has a lot more capacity, but I could also add object storage as well for the first stop of the data. Now, when I build my scale out backup repository, I have some really powerful options around data locality and performance. If I was to choose the performance policy, I can actually get very granular to say full backups go on certain extents and increments go on another. This is actually the way the scale out backup repository was first built. So even today you have really granular controls on your performance and loca locality policies. Now I'm gonna just go with the performance where everything can go everywhere. But in today's era of the cloud and immutability, this is really important. So I'm gonna take the capacity tier, which is theoretically large capacity with object storage, and I'm gonna extend this to Azure Blob Storage. Now, what's interesting is I'm also going to immediately copy those backups to object storage as soon as they are created. This will really help me uh, execute the 321 rule immediately. And then in this example, after 14 days, I'm going to move those backups to object storage as they age out of their operational restore window. Chances are you only restore from some of the most recent backups anyways. And the last piece of advice here is to also encrypt that data in the capacity tier in the cloud. I like to say encrypt your backup data in the cloud or someone else will do it for you. Additionally, you can also extend your backups into archive classes of storage. So in this example, I'm sending it to Azure Archive Storage. So this is that you know ultra low cost, super long retention type of storage. And if it's older than 90 days, it's a candidate to go into Azure Archive Storage. So this type of adjustment is really easy to do in the scale out backup repository. But you might remember that the first thing I did was I added that NFS share as a performance tier because that other NAS share is relatively small. So one of the cool things about the scale out backup repository is I can do what I would call unit level maintenance. So of these two resources in here, the NFS share has a lot more capacity than that NAS share. So let's go ahead and put that in maintenance mode. Now maintenance mode is a beautiful construct 
This will ensure that no new backups come in, but data is still available to be read out in certain situations. And then also, I have the option to do one of two other things. The first is I could seal it, which is like, hey, I just wanna let that data age out, and when it's empty from the, the policies in place, I will retire it. Or I can get into the last option of evacuating the backups, which this is really powerful as well. Evacuating the backups is potentially a good way to get out of a potential problem with the device. I've spoken to some people who have a lease return. That's a great mechanism as well. With the seal, if you know the lease return is coming or if you wanna do it quickly, you can do the backups evacuation just like this. It's gonna move in this example, 14.3 gigs out of that NAS resource and move them over to the NFS share. So really great policy driven approach to move backup data around with the scale out backup repository and it's ready for the cloud and all those other things. So just like that, you can see you can easily adjust backup data in the scale out backup repository, on-premises storage, dedupe appliances, object storage, all types of options. If you like what you see, go to veeam.com and download a trial today.